One good thing about the upcoming Snow White live-action remake is that you can get the original on 4K. Okay, I'm a big proponent of physical media. One day, I'll eventually have to show you guys my uh, library of different media that I have. Uh, the movie side, uh, it's actually pretty extensive. I probably have more books than movies now, but, you know, I got uh, CDs and all that stuff. Anything that I'm thinking that could, you know, end up disappearing from any sort of streaming service, which I'm not even subscribed to any, when I want to be entertained, I just mostly go on YouTube and rumble anyways but no if I want you know some music which I know some of the some of the bands that I like you know they have a propensity to get you know canceled for just being spicy like Motorhead and it's like Lemmy liked some iconography from some days gone by so eventually you know the leftists will come for them and you don't really want to mess around with Motorhead fans and that's between them and their perceived death wish Alice Cooper, classic libertarian, and Judas Priest, you'd think that they would have a little bit of cover when it comes to Rob Halford being gay and all, but at the same time, they're also a reasonably conservative-minded group, so yeah, eventually, eventually, all of these bands that I know and love will be muddied and messed with, and that's just gonna be the fact of life if we continue down this path. But I think we've probably hit peak insanity. I at least hope so. Maybe it'll get worse. Maybe it'll just drag on. Maybe we've hit there, hit the peak, and now it started to plateau for a little while. But I think, I think, judging by the box office returns for Disney specifically, their specific brand of insanity is going to end up reaching its peak with the Snow White stuff. Like, it's going to be completely downhill from here. We might have already seen the stumble with, you know, the Little Mermaid stuff, which wasn't... Uh, it, like it had its in, uh, intersectional feminism that was in there where Prince Eric couldn't save Ariel from Ursula in the final scene. No, no, no. It had to be the girl boss saving herself, which are uh, great, fantastic stuff. That's why you guys ended up losing so much money because it was the retelling of a classic timeless story needed to be updated for moder modern audiences. That's why nobody's going to remember any of that stuff. And that's also why and it's like, it's the biggest movie of the year, but now, okay, uh, what kind of cultural impact is the Barbie film going to have? Okay. And again, how much more of a hit to the legacy of the director and the writer of Barbie, Greta Gerwig, what's going to end up happening to her once this Snow White and the Seven Dwarves film, well, it's no longer Seven Dwarves anymore. It's just Snow White and Friends eventually does hit the theater next year because Greta Gerwig, uh, she wrote this fucking nonsense. And now we have some plot spoilers, which hold on to your ass cheeks for this one, guys. It's going to be fucking painful. Rachel Ziegler's Snow White is rumored to be an independent liberal socialist. Ah! Ah! That leads a revolution against the evil queen. Oh my god. Yo, man. Um... That's hilarious. You got a little brown girl going up against a... What's the ethnic background of the evil queen, Gal Gadot? I'm just wondering, man. Is she supposed to be a representation of capitalism gone corrupt? You, maybe I'm being too harsh on Greta Gerwig for being so fucking based. Because you can possibly interpret... Because she is just such a piss-poor, ideologically driven writer. Where you can go ahead and perceive Barbie as some sort of a based masterpiece. That just shows that Ken is the protagonist of the film as Barbie is the villain. Because no, Greta Gerwig couldn't write her way out of a wet paper bag but all of the praise that she's getting right now well it's gonna come tumbling down when anybody goes oh my god that snow white remake was terrible who wrote that shit greta Gr oh 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 she's she's awful what the fuck because nobody's gonna look brightly and more lovingly at barbie next year like it, it came and it went it made a whole bunch of money it's just like avatar man it just came to the box office and nobody's gonna fucking watch it again it's just gonna be one of those things that everybody did for a summer and then just go oh, fuck did i do that well let's see what we got here because this one right here i'm th oh my god like a lot of people are looking forward to the marvels at the end of the year you know basically the open casket wake of the mc you this right here oh man this is going to be the funeral it's the burial the wake the 10 year anniversary of the death rachel ziegler is going to kill disney if you don't believe me check out the plot to the remake of the first film that made disney
The first fucking film, 1937 animated classic. Do you think that this one, this abomination is going to get that 4K treatment? I don't think so. A new rumor claims that the upcoming live action Snow White starring Rachel Ziegler will see the character depicted as a liberal socialist who re leads a revolt against Gal Gadot's evil queen. So the evil queen is a, what, it is a capitalist during a f uh, feudal time. Okay, let's just take, you know, worst faith interpretation. She's, sub er, she's subjugating all of her subjects underneath her tyrannical rule which is kind of an l for women in positions of power because you know even with some of the most tyrannical male rulers that are out there and at least some people are prospering but no no no. if she's going to be an evil queen she's going to be totally irredeemable but i'd imagine that probably the backstory there the only reason that she's evil is probably because of a man or something like that i would imagine this is just nobody's actually going to be evil this is all just going to be shades of gray or for snow white shades of brown but because Snow White is going to be the fairest of them all, and by fair, what, uh, just and virtuous over somebody whose name is literally Evil Queen. Not exactly a high bar to cross, but okay. She's going to come in and bring in an economic policy, a, a way of governance that has killed more people in the real world than any other, than every other political system combined. Not exactly a strong pitch, but it's, again, just another reason that this film is going to be fucking tremendous. The latest rumor comes from scooper My Time to Shine Hello on X. Okay, now listen, I have no idea who this guy's sources are or anything like that, but how many times have we seen over the previous few years, whenever somebody comes out with a leak and it ends up being at least... True enough to be an accurate depiction of the story, but then at the same time when you see it actually play out on the screen, it's 20 times worse. The Game of Thrones leaks immediately comes to mind. Star Wars Rise of the Skywalker, oh my god, all of that entire plot summary was out there and it was basically a one for one. There's also been numerous other uh, Star Wars TV shows that have been leaked as well and that those ended up coming true, so whoever's got the inside scoop on Disney, seems to pretty much have the goods out there. So the scooper claims uh, people will, that save Snow White in this version are called the bandits. Oh, okay, cool. So that's those uh, Portland styled individuals. Jonathan, the male love interest who isn't a prince is also a bandit. Okay, so some, so this relationship's already doomed because he's gonna be somebody under the command control of Snow Off-White, like, okay. The bandits are like Robin Hood. They steal from the queen to feed the poor, which, oh my god. There's another Robin Hood story. So this is going to be what the higher budget version of what's happening on, oh my god. And again, that's something that I got to look at. It's, it, a different, it's an urban take on the Robin Hood story that's being produced by Global TV. Oh my god, it looks like an abomination. But anyways, back on point here. So it's going to be another one of these, hey guys, the government is evil. But then at the same time, when you listen to these people, the government is God. So it's, it's just disassociative messaging that they're putting forward. Snow White herself is an independent liberal socialist in this version with the bandits. Leads a, a revolution against the evil queen, he added. Yo, what a disaster. Scooper previously detailed the dwarves were being reimagined as bandits and the prince was no more in a post on X in the middle of July. Okay, so this would have... Did this also predate the different set leaks that came out where it's like, what the fuck is going on there with all of these things in the background? This looks piss poor. Now, Jonathan, the male love interest who isn't a prince, is also a bandit. The bandits are like Robin Hood, they steal from the queen, feed the poor. Yeah, 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 wonderful, fantastic. Okay, yeah, that's just... Yo, man, it... <laughs> Normally you see set pictures like that and you get ex er, you get inquisitive if the story that you're mildly interested in. The Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs Tale is pretty much known by everybody. Like it's a, it's a classic story for a reason. I look at that. I look at that and I just think that, you know, just a, a group of homeless people in uh, Philadelphia ransacked at Goodwill. Like, the fuck, man? Like, that doesn't look attractive at all whatsoever. It doesn't look enticing to go see. It just, it's one of those things where you can basically smell that picture. It's fucking gross. It was revealed that the dwarves were not going to be in the film back in January of 2022 when Disney spokesperson, or spokesman reacted to comments about her from actor Peter Dinklage. Yeah, there he is again. Or at least Game of Thrones is there again. Because I haven't seen Peter Dinklage pop up in anything else post that production. Man, that fucking, you know, series. Uh, two good seasons, two middling seasons, and then four seasons of absolute dog shit. Really was a blight on so many people's careers. 
Like, hey, did you know that there was a reunion between Jon Snow and Rob Stark on screen in the past couple of years? Yeah, I bet you didn't know that. It took place in a Marvel film, by the way, and I won't even tell you which one. You can go find out for yourself if you're so interested. Uh, the Disney spokesperson told The Hollywood Reporter to avoid reinforcing stereotypes that, what, people are short? Like, what the fuck? Okay, uh, from the original animated film. We are taking a different approach to these seven characters and have been consulting with members of the dwarfism community. That's so nice. What do you do? Bend over at the waist and go, Oh, little guys, what do you want with this movie right now? And then you just pat them on the head and you mess up their hair. We look forward, well, they look up, to sharing more as the film heads into production after a lengthy development period. And it's going to be even longer because eventually, eventually that goofy ass strike, which if you didn't know, is still going on at this point in time. They're eventually going to have to settle this. And this thing is eventually going to have to fucking be released somewhere. And now we're seeing from the plot spoilers that's out there. Yeah. Wonderful. Fantastic. It's going to be a girl or a girl boss, a 98 pound, five foot two girl boss leading a group of fucking homeless people to overthrow a 40 year old plank of wood. Fantastic is going to be great. Hopefully you spent $3.800 on this film because I wouldn't anticipate anything more turning up at the box office. The more you hear about this, the less painful it's ultimately going to be when it comes out. Oh my god, it, it's the gift that keeps on giving and still whenever the strike ends and Rachel Ziegler can go back out there and A, address the controversy and B, continue to add to it, I'll be waiting. I'll be waiting because this shit is just so fucking funny. So with all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.